It was an unusual day, even for the people of Wo Young, who were used to public executions. On a summer day in 263 AD, the city's grief-stricken residents came to the execution ground in the east of the capital to bid him farewell. Before this, 3,000 students from the Imperial Academy had written to ask that he be spared and made their teacher. They made this last desperate effort in the hope that General Sima Zhao, regent of the state of Cao Wei, would spare the scholar. But their petition didn't prevent the executioner's play from falling. After his death, his name was mentioned in histories such as the Book of Jin, a new account of the tales of the world, and comprehensive mirror for aid and government. Scholars and artists admired this man who became the cultural symbol of his era. His name was Ji Kang. The style of scholars like Ji Kang is an important topic in the history of Chinese thought. Writer Yu Xun called it Wei and Jin style. Late at night, the Woyang once echoed to the ancient and mysterious sound of a zither. It was as mournful as a ghost and as powerful as the wind and rain. The player was a famous scholar of the Wei and Jin dynasties, Ji Kang. According to legend, Ji Kang once stayed the night at Huayang Pavilion in southwest Liaoyang. A mysterious passerby gave him the divine melody Guanling Sun, asking him not to teach it to others. The melody had found a fitting owner. Ancient texts described Ji Kang as a wind in the pines, lofty and gentle. When he was drunk, he was a jade mountain about to fall. Due to his outstanding talent, Ji Kang became a famous scholar at an early age. Although he was Grand Master of Palace Leisure, he showed no interest in politics, preferring life in the country. Yuntai Mountain is over 100 kilometers from Luoyang. Ji Kang often traveled there to play music. He was joined there by six other scholars, Ruanqi, Shantao, Shangshu, Liu Ling, Ruanxian, and Wang Rung, all of whom were famous in Luoyang. Since they often met in a bamboo grove near Yuntai Mountain, they were called the Seven Sages of the Bamboo Grove. To them, the bamboo grove was a sanctuary, where they recited poetry and drank wine. They often wore loose, wide-sleeved robes. And when they were drunk, they dispensed with etiquette altogether, taking off their hats and going bare-chested. The Seven Sages all liked drinking, and it was one of the most important features of life in the Bamboo Grove. Shantao could drink 80 litres of wine before getting drunk. While Ruanji was once drunk for 60 days straight. But the most famous drinking story is told of Yu Ling. It is said that he'd often get drunk and carouse. Sometimes he'd strip and stand in his house stark naked. When visitors mocked him, he replied dismissively, Heaven and earth are my home. And this house is my pants. What are you doing in my pants?
Why was drinking so prevalent at the time? It reflected both a strong attachment to life and a fear of sudden death. In 240 AD, the young crown prince Sa Feng took the throne. He ruled with the aid of two regents, his uncle Sa Shuang and general Sima Yi. As time passed, Sa Xiang and Sima Yi came increasingly into conflict. In 249 AD, when Sao Feng and Sao Xiang went to visit the Gaoping tomb, Sima Yi launched a coup and took control of the capital. In the subsequent purge, thousands of people were killed. The Sima clan now had full military and political control of Sao Wei. This brutal political struggle meant that scholars constantly feared for their lives. These Nanjing Museum has a rare treasure that depicts the seven sages of the bamboo grove. A mural from a southern dynasty's tomb. This is a rubbing of it. The museum's director, Gun Yang, has studied the mural for many years. All seven sages are depicted, including Ji Kang, Ruan Ji, and Shan Tao. Ji Kang's wife, Princess Chang Le Ting, was from the Cao clan. Shan Tao was the cousin of Sima Yi's son, Sima Zhao, and Ruan Ji was the son of Ruan Yu one of the seven scholars of Jianan, and a famous Zhao Wei scholar. Despite their different backgrounds, the sages drank together in the bamboo grove. It was the only place where they were, to some extent, protected from brutal political conflict. One other person is also portrayed in the mural. He looks quite unlike the seven sages who are barefoot and sitting in relaxed positions. The man is Rong Chi Chi, a hermit from the spring and autumn period. Why was he depicted in the bamboo grove with scholars from the Wei and Jin dynasties nearly a thousand years later? According to legend, Rong Chi Chi had talent and a gift for music, but no political ambition. In his old age, he roamed the countryside, dressed in coarse cloth, singing and playing music. Like the seven sages, he belonged to the Shi or scholarly class. During the Western Zhou period, Shi had been warriors and formed the lowest aristocratic rank. But during the spring and autumn and warring states periods, they lost their noble status. While they were no longer aristocrats, they retained their titles and also their tradition of being educated either in the classics or the military arts. Sher could become lower or middle level officials, form the backbone of military operations, or devote themselves to acquiring both ancient and modern cultural knowledge. Many men of this scholarly class were determined, ambitious, and socially responsible. But the reality did not always live up to this ideal. The Southern Dynasty's artists juxtaposed Rong Chi Chi and the Seven Sages to emphasize how similar they were. These scholars all lacked ambition.
During the Han Dynasty, Confucianism had become the dominant social doctrine. Emperor Wu promoted it at the expense of other schools of thought. In government, the advice and actions of Confucian scholars were increasingly valued. In accordance with Confucian principles, these scholars often had a strong sense of historical mission and were self-sacrificing. As the Eastern Han Dynasty declined, Confucian scholars became dissatisfied with the status quo. Their critiques of prominent figures were known as Qing Tun, which literally means pure conversation. At the end of the Han Dynasty, Kong Rong, one of the seven scholars of Jianan, adopted this spirit of Qing Tun. He believed that Chancellor Cao Cao was controlling the government by manipulating the emperor, and that this was a crime. As a Shir, his sense of responsibility made him criticize Cao Cao. In 208 AD, Cao Cao had Kong Rong and his whole family executed on a charge of gross insubordination. The brutality of politics prompted scholars to retreat and ponder the origins of the universe, life and society. Such scholars as He Yen and his student Wang Bi wrote metaphysical commentaries on Lao Tzu, Zhuang Tzu and the I Ching, thus creating a synthesis between Confucianism and Taoism. They discuss nature and humanity, existence and non-existence, objects and their properties, soul and mind, body and spirit, nature and Confucian ethics. The scholars who took part in these discussions were influenced by their perceptions of history and reality. The views they expressed in the form of Qing Tan were not a sober reflection on pure speculative philosophy, but rather a passionate search for the basics of a rational society. By engaging in Qing Tan, scholars maintained their integrity while fulfilling their responsibilities as officials. However, it's difficult to balance ideals and reality. As the struggle between the Sao and Samar clans became increasingly heated, the intellectuals were unable to remain neutral. There were now only two options open to them. They could continue to support Sao Wei's royal family, or side with the Samars. One of those who benefited from his ties to the Samar family was Zhong Hui. The son of Zhong Yo, grand tutor of the Sawe court, Zhong Hui's brilliance was obvious from an early age. He was only two years younger than Ji Kung, but admired the famous scholar. Zhong Wei had written a book called Four Theories, discussing the relationship between talent and temperament, and hoped that it would gain recognition from Ji Kang. He went to Ji Kang's house, but lost his nerve, threw the book in from the outside, then ran away. Ghetangu At this time, the Samar clan had a great deal of power, even over the royal family. Even so, the uncompromising Ji Kung 
chose not to cooperate with the Samars. According to a Chinese saying, the most difficult jobs in the world are forging metal, punting, and making bean curd. Ji Kang had been forging metal most of his life and said that it required both strength and courage. According to the Book of Jin, Ji Kang was a master smith. As sparks from a roaring forge rose high into the air, the musical sound of his hammer hitting iron would reverberate through the bamboo grove. One day, as Ji Kung was forging iron, Zhong Hui came to visit. Even though he was a court advisor and a favorite of Sima Zhao, he wanted to meet the famous scholar. But Ji Kung ignored the courtier and continued working as if no one was there. For a long time, neither man spoke. The only sound was the clanging of iron. As Zhong Hui turned to leave, Ji Kung finally asked, What did you hear that made you come? And what have you seen that makes you leave? Zhong Hui replied, I heard what I heard, so I came. And I saw what I've seen, so I'm leaving. The clash between these two metaphysics experts was like a contest between masters and could have only one winner. Their dialogue is now famous, and the metaphysics of the time is still influential today. Xuanxuan的极大的推进了当时中国人的思维水平。使得我们在理论上的彻底性、理性化的程度、规范化的程度都大大的提高。因为它是用当时他们认为最标准的解释来做解释。那么这种程度，我们今天可以很负责任的来断论，就是说，当时在思考、思维路径上，在思维结论上所达到的水平，显然是领先于群体。The activity of studying metaphysics together was also called Qing Tang. Most of the seven sages of the bamboo grove were experts in metaphysics. They all praised nature and belittled Confucian ethics. The most famous statement of the Wei and Jin dynasties is Ji Kang's, transcend Confucianism and follow nature. Ji Kang believed要超越这个名教而直认自然，自然是人的本性，很明确的有政治态度。这个政治态度呢，就是反对司马氏集团的，因为司马氏集团推行的是名教。but not even the most famous scholar can transcend reality. As the Samar clan consolidated its hold over Sa Wei, it began to offer jobs to scholars across the country. Because of this, Almost all the sages of the bamboo grove left, one by one, and returned to the imperial court. Ruan Ji became an infantry captain, but still spent most of his time drunk. Because he was related to the Samar clan, Shantao rose smoothly through the ranks at court. In 261 AD, he was about to be promoted again, who would take over his current position? He thought of his old friend from the bamboo grove. This appointment would suit both sides. Not only would it show the Samara group's tolerance of scholars, but also provide Ji Kung with a dignified way out of the bamboo grove. Winter had ended, and the peach blossom was in bloom. Shantao received a clear answer with the falling of the petals.
In his letter to Chantal, Ji Kang used his strongest rhetoric to explain why he was refusing the position. Ji Kang was not rejecting Shantar personally, but the Samar group he represented. In a broadside, he dismissed King Tang of Shang, King Wu of Zhou, the Duke of Zhou, and Confucius. It was a rallying cry for the times.是造了下阶的反周王是法纣的那么周公呢是推行这个圣王这套这个这个政治理念的那么这样一些圣王的呃所谓功德被嵇康看起来他说我是非薄的我认为这些人都不对叫非贪污而薄周孔连孔子一道
，我不能做生性家奴，是吧？是这样，啊，嵇康的死是政治，政治问题。After his execution, Ji Kang was buried in his birthplace on Qigong Mountain in Anhui Province. His death left the entire scholarly class grief-stricken. Soon after that, Ruan Ji died in a drunken sleep. Shan Tao, on the other hand, continued to rise through the ranks of the imperial court. Fourteen years later. The Samas forced Xiang Shu, another sage of the Bamboo Grove, to come to Luoyang. On his way, he made a detour to visit Ji Kang's old home in Shanyang. As the sun set, Xiang Shu recalled the good times he'd had with Ji Kang in the Bamboo Grove, and found himself filled with sorrow. He wrote a poem, part of which reads. I mourn the last moments of Ji Kang's life, as he looked at the setting sun and played the zither. The age of the bamboo grove has long ended. No similar sanctuary now exists. Zhuolin Society's students, they are using their own behavior, not as a way to raise their voice, but as a way to show Ji Kang's personality and his influence. 在中国历史上是非常高的，和后来的那些名士啊、假名士啊那种假的放达，呃那一派人，那完全完全是重欲的那那一派人，完全不一样。那些人就没有了这种，不是不是不是有心里有痛苦，他完全麻醉了。At the end of the Western Jin Dynasty, eight scholars known as the Bada. Would shut themselves up in a hut and drink for days, dishevelled and naked. They thought they were emulating the sages of the bamboo grove, but they had no understanding of the difficulties faced by Ji Kang and Ruan Ji, and lacked their sense of social critique and responsibility. Ji Kang couldn't have imagined that his four melodies. Would be played all over Luoyang during this period. However, his compositions had become artistic trifles for members of the upper classes. Wealthy official Shi Chong, for example, mixed with a group of rich people and scholars known as the Twenty Four Friends. They often met in the Golden Valley, where they feasted, drank, and recited poetry. The scholarly class soon became addicted to this luxury and dissipation, and flaunting one's wealth became commonplace. Xijin 后期呢，一切情况就就有所变化，就是严重的败坏了社会风气。呃，呃，另一方面呢，这个玄学呢和政治这个区分不开，哎。有的那些政治家呢，不专心治国，就把玄谈玄作为第一要务，就形成了清谈误国。Uninhibited behavior was only one aspect of the sages of the bamboo grove. The other was metaphysical discussion, which was also imitated by later generations. Many officials used Qing Tang to show off or to stay out of trouble. Imperial official Wang Yang was an expert in Qing Tang and fond of commenting on Lao Tzu and Zhuang Tzu. Because of his high rank, others also began talking about metaphysics. This meant that the whole court operated on an esoteric plane. Commentators have described Wang Yang as a typical bureaucrat philosopher, uninterested in government affairs. Wang Yan was commander in chief when he was captured and killed by Shi Le, founder of the later Zhao Dynasty. Just before he died, Wang Yan said, "If I hadn't dedicated my life to floating vanities and instead used my abilities to make the empire stronger, it wouldn't have come to this."
In 316 AD, the short-lived Western Jin regime, which had united China for only 37 years, came to an end. The Sama family led a large number of officials across the Yangtze River to Jiankang, where they founded the Eastern Jin regime. The scholarly class took their accomplishments with them. People south of the Yangtze River have been making bamboo fans for thousands of years. After the Jin scholars moved here, the bamboo fans became more elegant. Now, thousands are produced each day in this workshop near Jiankang Mountain in Chaoxing. During the Eastern Jin era, one old woman was worried because she couldn't sell her bamboo fans. A passing scholar wrote on the fans, then said to her, Tell the people that this is Wang Yojun's calligraphy, and you can sell the fans for 100 coins each. Sure enough, she sold all her fans. It turned out that the passing scholar had been the master calligrapher Wang Shijie. His preface to the Orchid Pavilion poems, written in semi-cursive script, is considered one of the world's most important calligraphic works. Held in the third month of the lunar calendar, the spring purification ceremony was intended to ward off misfortune. Scholars sat by the banks of a stream and wine-filled cups were floated down it. Anyone a cup stopped in front of had to compose a poem or else drink the wine. It was at such a gathering that Wang Shijie composed and wrote down his preface to the Orchid Pavilion poems. Also present at the gathering was Xia An, Prime Minister of Eastern Jin. As a young man, Xia An had been a proponent of Qing Tan and shunned official positions. But after his brother was defeated in battle and reduced to commoner status, Xia An returned to the court and became Prime Minister. When Eastern Jin was attacked by the state of former Qin, he also served as commander-in-chief. With only 80,000 troops, he defeated Qin's million-strong army at the Fei River. This ultimately led to the collapse of former Qin. Xia An's efforts not only won decades of peace for Eastern Jin, but also earned him a reputation as the intellectual prime minister. You像谢安,他们的整个前行大兵压境,而且力量悬殊,这样一个时候,他们能够细加谋划,可以说是做了整个东京的中流砥柱。万威王与基岛,这个应该说都是一种当时世族在当时所起,中间作用,资助作用,
This is an extract from Peach Blossom Spring, in which Ta Yuan Ming, an Eastern Jin scholar, describes an ethereal utopia. It's a place where there's no injustice, and everyone lives a harmonious and comfortable life. In the final turbulent years of the Eastern Jin period, Ta Yuan Ming resigned from his post and returned home, where he spent his time drinking, reading, and writing poems about rural life. He practiced poverty and managed to lead the reclusive life that the seven sages of the bamboo grove had yearned for. Rinko 古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古代的古
When he had finished playing, he said, a little regretfully, now Guan Ling's son will be lost forever. The Wei and Jin style, represented by Guan Ling's son, has manifested itself in different forms over time. This awakening of the human spirit led to expressions of individuality, criticism of the political situation, attention to the vast universe, the pursuit of a poetic life, and the return to one's spiritual home. All this is Wei and Jin style.